Hey everybody, welcome to the GMG Review. Today we're taking a look at Gaslands Refueled, the, I guess, 1.5 edition of Gaslands, the hit game from Osprey um, of vehicular mayhem and combat. So you might remember this used to be a Osprey War Game series book. It came with a blue spine and was um, one of the saw cover books, but it did so gangbusters. Mike did such a great job unleashing the beast of people who are um, half car fanatics and half organic fanatics that they've given an upgrade to a full hard cover release, um, full color, with some gorgeous illustrations and tons of new content. Uh, if you've been keeping up with Gasland since it came up, uh, or came out, um, there's been a bunch of time extended articles and um, sort of like expansions to the game, which were all free on Gaslands.com. Um, and what this has done is compiled them, edited them, made them like the, the best possible expanded content they could be, and then put them into this new book. So if you missed out on Gaslands the first time around, um, this is a completely compatible with everything you have from the, the blue uh, War Game series book, but adds tons of new features, things like campaigns, playing uh, narrative missions, story missions, more war rig stuff. Um, and then just lots of new weapons and perks and all the good stuff that you get in Gaslands. So if you're a Gaslands fan, this is for you because this takes all of the print and play um, free material that exists on the web right now and bangs it into one beautiful big, how many page? Uh, what would you get out of this, Mike? You got a 184 page book. Um, so tons and tons of content, uh, lots of pretty pictures to look at, and of course um, all of the new sort of like updated stuff in one place. Um, it also updated some of the presentation. Mike talked about that a little bit, just how not the rules uh, of the game play, because they play pretty much identically to the, um, the current existing rules, but uh, how they are presented. So they're a bit more easy to digest. You can find the rules you're looking for quickly, um, and you can get just on the table and playing probably one of the best club games released in the last five years. If you were looking for a party game or a game to introduce um, your friends to tabletop wargaming miniature hobbies, this is, this is e easily one of the best ones to do it with. You can go to Walmart right now, spend about five bucks on cars, uh, clear your dining room table off, and start playing in about 15 minutes if you just have this book. So, for those of you not familiar with Gaslands, uh, what is Gaslands? We're going to jump right into Gaslands in 60 seconds. Uh, it is a car combat game that combines toy cars, movement templates, and dice to light a race skid and blast your way through a post-apocalyptic dystopian future. Uh, and that's pretty much the, 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 the big tagline. All you really need to know. All you really need is this book, um, some templates, which are available at the back here. Uh, for photocopying and printing out. So if you just put these in some serial packet, you're ready to rock and roll. Um, everything from your slide movement templates through to your pole position template, who's in charge, your bursts, and then down here, things like ammo hazards and vote tokens for playing big multiplayer games. And um, then you got all your cards here to print off. You just photocopy these back pages, you're ready to rock and roll, and then some quick rough sheets, which I'm sure will appear uh, relatively soon on Osprey's um, game resources section of the webpage, which usually has all the stuff you're looking for for roster sheets and FAQs and all those bits and pieces. And it includes all the new weapons too, things like a death ray, because you gotta have a death ray <laughs> and harpoons and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, the basic premise of Gaslands, uh, the basic scenario is called a death race. Uh, you get a bunch of cars, you put them down, you get cans to build your cars with. Uh, cans is the monetary term, it's your it's your ducats, your fun bucks to spend on things, to put them together and, and make a car. Uh, and it, really, one of my favorite things about Gaslands was when uh, Mike sent me a review copy, oh geez, like two, three years ago now. Um, he sent it with a little postcard inside that he signed a, a you know, just a note to me. Uh, but it had this stuff in it, these little tables. R you can build a car in Gaslands almost like in five minutes with just these tables and start playing as soon as you know the core mechanics. So you pick your vehicle, you just you get your little you get your little Hot Wheels car and you decide what it is, is it a drag racer, a bike, a buggy, a bike with a sidecar, an ice cream truck. I mean it's it's, it's all the tropes. Uh, <laughs> car, performance car, truck, gyrocopter, ambulance, monster truck, heavy truck, bus, helicopter tank, or war rig, which is of course the big uh, tractor trailer with guns on it. Uh, and from there you're gonna get your hull, how many hit points it has, it's handling, which is how many dice it rolls to try and uh, perform maneuvers and do different um, uh, functions like speeding up and speed down, sliding, spinning, stuff like that. It's maximum gear, so how fast it can go at maximum, which means how many times it gets to move per turn. Uh, number of crews, number of people in it, which also limits how many guns you can fire. So your crew is basically your cap for firing weapons. Uh, and then your build slots, which is how many like empty rooms there is to build stuff into on the car. Uh, and then finally any special rules it has, like does it have a jet engine? Can it slip away? Or does it have a roll cage? All little bits and pieces that make it a unique vehicle in the game. And then it's cost in cans. So 
typically when you first play, the best way to learn this rule is get three or four friends together. Each of you build a, let's say, 25 can car. 20, 25 cans. So like, if you wanted to build like just a car, it's 12 cans, and you start buying it guns, you've got 13 to spend on buying it things like, oh, I don't know, a glue dropper, or <laughs> an HMG, a machine gun. Uh, and then you can do things like put it on turrets, uh, give it armor plating, give an experimental nuclear engine. <laughs> Like, why not? All these cool things. Um, and when you spend your cans, you can then put it on the table and play a game. Now, when you play a game, it's relatively simple. You're going to uh, put all your cards down um, and go through the round structure, which is a movement step, an attack step, and a wipeout step. And then you go to your next activation until everybody's activated. Um, you do have to have some special dice, so you can either get some just regular D6s and use a table to, to look and figure out what they are. Um, it's relatively simple, what, whether they're hazards or shifts or, um, or uh, slides, and you're, you're basically just rolling a D6, and on a 4, 5, 6 it's a hazard, on, or sorry, on a 4, 5, 6 it's a shift, on a 1 it would be a hazard, on a 2 a spin, a 3 a slide, um, and you, you're just trying to spend those results basically to, to, to change gear, go up, go down, um, get rid of hazards, gain hazards, or slide and move around. And you don't have to roll those dice either if you don't want to. Um, so yeah, so the round structure is exactly the same, just presented better, round one, doing these things, and that's by gear phase. Uh, qualifying for activation, you have to have, you have to basically be in a gear or less of whatever round it is in order to activate your car. So when, it, when the, the cars themselves have a maximum gear, that's basically how many times per round they get to go and move. So let's say a big truck could be like a, a highest gear is three or four. It means that when you're at your top speed of four, you don't get to activate again after that. Whereas a performance car with a uh, max gear of six can activate two more times after you and just like fly past because it's just going faster, just a faster car. Um, so you kind of trade off typically armor and weight, like how big you are and how like tough you are for how many times you can move and how fast you can move. And it also opens up other maneuvers. Um, so once you do your, your, your activation, you're going to pick your car and you're going to place down one of these templates. And depending on what gear you're in, you have different ones available. Now there is a rule called you touch it, you use it. Um, if you touch a, a, a template in this game, um, you are forced to then use that template. So you can't even, like you literally have to eyeball with your hands behind your back to decide which one you're going to use. It's, it's not, it's a bit of a controversial rule. Not everybody likes to use it. Our, our version that we use here in the studio is, um, if you pick up a template and put it next to the car, like if you actually like stick it next to the car, uh, then you, you have to use it. You're stuck with it. Once you've picked one, you're stuck. But because templates end up in like piles and stuff during parties, we found that that rule didn't work when we're playing big multiplayer games. Um, unless we had them like laid out almost like dentist tools, <laughs> or like doctor's tools, and everyone had to put them back exactly where they were when they were done. Um, it's too messy and chaotic usually in multiplayer games to use that rule. So we have a variation rule that we use in the studio where if you lay it down or you put it anywhere near the model, then you have to use it. Um, but again, to each their own. The idea there is that you can't pre-measure and that your cars can go crazy and, and go out of control. So things like a basic straight, almost anybody can do. You can go medium from gears one to four. And because it's a simple maneuver, it also has this little symbol here. You get a free shift to either shift up, shift down, cancel maneuvers, cancel hazards, um, and all the things that you might want to use them for. They're your, they're your good driving skill results. And then in gears five and six, you can do a long. So you can see the faster you're going, the faster gear you're in, the, the more you can actually zip ahead and what opens up to you. So you can't do a medium uh, straight and you don't get any free, um, shifts if you're in gears one through uh, five or six because it's blanked out here and that's how you read these little symbols now sometimes you get a hazard too if you're going to veer out of the way and you're in gear four you're going to generate a hazard automatically on your car and as you go through the different movement steps so you're going to select a movement template place the movement template roll any skid dice you want to roll you don't have to roll but you can roll equal up uh, equal or less to your handling uh, and it doesn't have to be all of them you can just roll one or two if you're looking for one or two results and you can spend them um, discard one hazard or spin result, change a gear up or down by plus one, and you gain a hazard token, discard one hazard token, or discard without effect, and you have to spend those things as you go. Then you gain hazard tokens equal to all the uncancelled hazard slide and spin tokens, then you place a slide template if it has one, and then move the vehicle to its final position. Then you have what's called a collision window. If during that movement you've touched something, like a piece of train or another car, you're gonna smash into it. And then if there's any spin results that weren't canceled, then you get to spin it um, left to right up to 90 degrees. And that causes another collision window because you could spin into something as well. Um, the vehicle does not actually move until step 1.7, therefore it does not trigger a collision until that point. So until you've done all these things, it doesn't actually collide. 
Uh, and then you get to um, resolve all that. So you can change gear as well by shifting up and down, going faster. You typically start in one, unless you have a perk like hard st um, hot start, which would keep you in a higher gear. Um, and of course, spins are rotating the car up to 90 degrees left to right. A slide is, there's a notch in all the templates where you're going to put the slide template, and it basically slides you out of position during the move. Um, and unless you cancel a slide, you have to use it, and you'll end up either left or right 90 degrees, um, and you're, I think your opponent... No, I think you get to decide, actually. If he goes off the slide during his movement step, it must be placed... Uh, the player controlling the active field can choose the direction they face. So you actually control your slide and use it to like go around corners. And actually, sometimes, even though you gain hazards, you might want to slide, because it gives you a cool bonus thing. Now, once you've actually moved your car and activated it, uh, you get to do the combat phase, where you get to shoot, pick a weapon, um, actually all your guns, if you have enough crew, can shoot if you want, uh, and then resolve of what your range is, shoot some guns, do some damage. Now when you're shooting guns, you're just looking for four pluses in your dice pool. You're just adding up attack dice. Uh, as many four pluses as you can possibly get. Every six is a critical, counts as two hits instead of one. Now, uh, when you're targeted by an attack, you can also try and evade it, and when you evade, you roll a number of dice equal to your gear that you're currently in. That's how fast you're going. So the faster you're going, the better you are at evading, and every six you get cancels one of your opponent's successes. So let's say I was in gear six, um, I got attacked by someone, they got four successes. I'd have six chances at rolling a six and canceling some of those and trying to trying to avoid some of the damage, basically. Some things you can't avoid, like explosions, because the idea is that it's just enveloping your car and you can't drive away from it. Uh, now you've also got some bonus C kind of attacks and things like the harpoon can drag you. There's tons of additional effects for the weapons. I'm not going to get into all that right here because uh, this is just a, it's just an overview for people who haven't played the game before. And then you got your wipeout step. If you ever have six or more hazards, you might wipe. Actually, you do wipe out. You know, they don't have a test. The, 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 the question is, do you roll over and like take a whole bunch of damage or not? So you have to make what's called a wipeout check, um, and you have to resolve the active vehicle's wipeout first. Uh, so you make a flip check, if the low, so you roll a d6, if it's lower than the current gear, suffer two hits, and you're forced to move medium straight forward, um, and then uh, if you roll higher than your current gear, you're okay, you're safe. So obviously the higher your gear you're in, the harder it is to roll above your current gear level to avoid just like du -du 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 of hazarding and rolling over and flipping and taking a bunch of damage. Um, then you have a collision window because you can actually roll into something during the wipeout step. Uh, you can reset, uh, regardless of the flip check, reduce number, um, discard all your hazard tokens, reduce your gear to one because you stop. You know what I mean? You like grind to a halt. And then you lose control. Regardless of the flip check, the player clockwise, the, the player controlling the active vehicle pivots around the center to any facing. So your opponent gets to spin, the person to your left, basically, your opponent gets to spin the car to face anywhere he wants to spin. Um, and yeah, and, and that's it. So those are the three phases of the game, basically. Pick a car, move the car, do it in a combat phase, and then check to see if you wipe out or not. And you're going to go around based on whoever currently has pole position. Now, pole position can just be a revolving thing that gets handed around after a dice off. Or in certain missions, like the death race, it's the last person to go through a gate hands over pole position basically until you go through so the next person passes a gate because you're trying to go through um number gates to get to the finish line so there's different ways of having pole position but it's just the order in which people go and you typically go clockwise around the table um, lots of nice new art. I don't know if you noticed, but the, they've done actually included a whole bunch of nice new art bits. Um, there are some of the originals in here. I think the, actually the original cover is in here as well and a lot of new photos as well. Uh, the original cover is... Nope, not here. It must be a little bit further on. It's a, a cool blue cover in here. No, we don't see it. Uh, so a lot of this is new. This additional rule stuff, so things like reversing, being forced to move, the touch you lose it rule. Um, they were they were in the previous rule book, but he, he's just kind of reformatted this to make it a little easier to find. So instead of these additional rules being placed into uh, the core rules, he's pulled the core rules out so that they're a little easier to digest and then put this stuff in separately so that when it comes up, it's able to be kind of discussed appropriately. Because like, you don't need to, the reversing could just be in the core rules, like right there under movement, how you move a car. But it's not typically going to happen unless somebody wipes out. So having it happen after the wipeout step, just from a formatting point of view, makes a lot of sense. And I actually really like the decision to do that, like when you're forced to move from an effect like being dragged. Because they're situational, they can sit in their own um, category, and they don't need to, in, I guess, interrupt the learning when you're first learning the game. So Mike's done a really good job of cleaning the rulebook up in that way, so that if you're teaching someone to play this game from the beginning, if it's your first time playing Gaslands, you digest the important parts first, and the, the more like situational rules that... It, when you're first writing a rulebook, logically you might sit in the movement step. Like, here's all the things you might have to do while you're moving. They don't need to be there. Put them somewhere else so that you can just digest the important stuff first, and then as situations come up, you have a, a section, basically, where they all sit. 
uh, trivial maneuvers, pushing it, things like pushing it. That's actually, that was in the core rules before, I think, under just where your skid dice were for rolling your skid dice. Pushing it means you can gain a hazard to reroll your skid test if you didn't like it, reroll any of the dice in your hand. Um, so you're automatically generating a hazard, but you might get more shifts to do the maneuver, do the thing you want to do, or even get a spin or a slide if you're looking for one of those. Um, didn't need to sit in the primary rules, and it's just there as a later option, because it's an optional thing, you don't have to do it. Extra attack rules, damage, rules for obstructions, interrupted movement like hitting obstacles. Again, all that was typically in the main body, and now it's in its own category, so it's a bit easier to find. Yeah, look like at this Colonel Sanders on his truck, spraying, spraying stuff, spraying champagne. And then we get to setting up a game. So core rules are about the first 60 or so pages, probably minus you know, all the intro bits. Uh, and then we get into building a team and choosing a scenario. So Street Race is now the name of the main scenario, not Death Race. I'm not entirely sure what the difference is there, but it's the same idea. You're, you're basically having a race around a track. Um, and then building a team uh, doesn't actually give you a doesn't actually give you a suggested can size. It just says for your first couple games, um, a single buggy uh, and a single car, both armed with a single front-facing machine gun, will give you a good idea of how to play the game. It's good advice, nice simple car. And they're, they're different enough that they handle differently too, which is cool. And here we go, Street Race. Street Race is a simplified version of Death Race scenario from the, uh, that appears on 124. This scenario is intended to give an introduction to the Gaslands game. Uh, give a pl each player a team one car and one buggy, both armed with the front panel machine. There you go, so you have to build any cars. It's simplified in that you don't have to actually do any of the building mechanics. Set up a pair of objectives, flaggers or crates, a uh, long straight apart from a starting line, another pair to create a finish line. Make sure the start and finish lines are at least three long straights away from each other, lay out some terrain, uh, such as rocks, crates, or barriers, and break up the position of the start line and finish line. Roll up CS pole position, uh, rotate pole position clockwise at the end of each gear phase. And then starting with the player in pole position, take turns uh, placing a vehicle anywhere touching the starting grid, not touching the other vehicle. And that's it. Victory is the first one across the finish line. There you go. It's a nice simplified death race. So it, it is basically death race, but with a more linear start to finish. You don't have to like figure it or loop the loop back. Um, you don't have to worry about gates either. You're just trying to get from one to the other without, without dying. Uh, and then here we go, creating a team. Building a vehicle as described. Pick a car. Look at its build slots. Start banging guns into it. Advanced guns, crew fired weapons. So these are the ones your crew can actually fire, like blunderbusses, gas grains, that's all new. Having a magnum, uh, steel nets. So what's cool now is, is because of all of the time extends being added into the book, you kind of have everything in tech level from like your Fury Road tech level of like almost quasi medieval, um, sort of like esoteric weapons that are like being used by like war boys and stuff like that, through to like a high science thing where you might have things like gas grenades or you know, like a more of like sci fi esque armament of weapons. Uh, things like drop weapons, you've got caltrops, napalm, RC car bombs, sentry guns, you can drop a sentry gun to shoot other people, and smoke droppers. Uh, what else is new and exciting? Vehicle upgrades, armor platings from the original one, nuclear engine and teleporter from the original one, uh, improvised sludge thrower, I don't know what that means, but that's exciting. Uh, roll cages from the original, turrets, rams, those are pretty much all the same. Just the, uh, the improvised sludge thrower is what I haven't seen before, we'll see what it does. It this vehicle may place the burst template for its dropped weapon anywhere that's at least partially within medium range and 360 arc of fire in this vehicle. <laughs> there you go. Why not? That's hilarious. Because it just throws sludge at people. Uh, audience votes. These are the special rules for um, basically the interaction that fans have watching Gaslands. Uh, Gaslands is like the most popular TV show in the post-apocalypse dystopian world of Gaslands, and so the audience can influence things a little bit. It's kind of Hunger Gamesy. Like if you remember the audience in Hunger Games would like send out like little drone care packages of things like. Um, I think at one point they send medicine out for a burn, like stuff like that. This is kind of the same idea. They might send like, they might pay for crew to go in to flip a car back over and get you back into the race. And the idea is you earn audience votes by doing stuff. So a player who has one of their vehicles wrecked, they gain an audience vote. A player starts around without any active vehicles, they get audience votes. Um, and then you can spend them for effects like burning rubber. Uh, that vehicle can immediately change gear either up or down one and gain hazards. You don't have to have any successful shifts to do it. You can just burn rubber to do it. Uh, thunderous applause. Select a vehicle you control. Immediately remove D6 hazard tokens from it. So even if you're about to wipe out like you're crazy hazardous, you can spend audience foot to get rid of some uh, hazard tokens because everyone starts applauding. Uh, executive intervention. This one's funny. It's two audience votes. Select a vehicle you don't control. The vehicle immediately gains a hazard <laughs> token until it has five hazard tokens. Oh no! So the executives like they boo earns a car basically and almost make it wipe out. 
and then reload. Uh, it's like a single weapon or upgrade on a vehicle you control, you gain an ammo token. So a drone flies in, like reloads your missile launcher or whatever. Um, and audience votes are especially fun in multiplayer games because they allow you, if you die, to have a crew run out basically and flip your car over in its previous position if it's flipped over, or spawn one at a gate or something like that and bring it back into the game. So they're a handy mechanic. More respawn, there you go for three. Uh, that's why you gain two audience votes every turn you don't have a car in play, because it gets you to respawn basically. And then Carpe DM immediately move pole position to a player of your choice to prevent pole position from moving the next time it would be moved. Yeah, you can spend audience votes for that too. And then you got your sponsors. So every Gaslands team is typically sponsored by one of the different either corporate interests or social interests or power interests in the Gasland world. Rutherford is a militaristic sort of like. Um, PMC almost, these lots of tanks and heavy vehicles. Uh, Miyazaki is the burning rubber, super fast, high tech, glow effects underneath them cars. Michigan is like the experimental technology one, so a little, little crazy illegal technology. You got teleporters and ray guns and stuff. Um, Idris is the hot and fast, like cult of speed one. They're a bit war boysy. Uh, Slime is very war boysy because they're like the straight up punk apocalypse, like dudes with uh, mohawks and goggles driving their, their crazy souped up beetles. The Warden is one of my favorite ones because this is basically the death race um, uh, shtick. Is this is a, uh, a huge South American like prison system where the Warden sends out teams to compete in Gaslands and they're actually welded into their cars. Like, they drive like cars they can basically make themselves out of wrecks and stuff like that and they can be welded into their cars so they can't escape because they're supposed to be you know, they're prisoners. So uh, the warden um, it says they'll reward them with the freedom if they win and blah, blah. It's a way of like monetizing the prison system, basically putting these guys into this death race, which I think is really cool. Uh, Scarlet is new. Scarlet is a uh, an upgrade and it's kind of a piratey one. <laughs> uh, whereas Gaston's able to support a vast ecosystem of villainous and scurvy raiders, picking off richer teams. Uh, but Nuzra with the infamy and showship of Scarlet Annie, a dashing and flamboyant buccaneer, her cult following is likely more to do with her canny association with the long-running Death Valley Death Run documentary TV series than any particular skill at Dust Bowl piracy. So she's a Dust Bowl pirate and runs runs a pirate crew. The Highway Patrol, which are kind of the cops, Verney. Um, many have taken the bent deal offered by Warden Cadelia, but uh, only one has ever earned their freedom. This is a dude who's earned his freedom. Verney now specializes in building unique Frankensteins. Ha, I get it, Frankenstein, death race. Uh, monsters of vehicles for anyone who can afford the high quality customs. So this is the dude that gets away, basically. Uh, and then Maxine. Maxine's the current grease smeared face of the Black Swans. While many might assume uh, art to have been the last thing to survive the Martian bombs, the Black Swans dance their mechanical mask for hypnotizing audience at ballet, but the dancers weigh 4,000 pounds and are dripping with engine oil. Um, yeah, they're like a crazy dancing musical thing. Order of the Inferno. <laughs> Yandy Idris is not dead. He cannot die. He rides on living flame. So this is another like crazy uh, culty one, the cult of Idris, cult of speed one. But they're more like, they're more like, I don't know. They're more like death cultists even than just speed freaks. And then Beverly, the devil on the highway. The low growling and starting uh, grid was suddenly eclipsed by an ear splitting dizzying sound. Eyeball shaking loud. This shri uh, shrill screeching was suffocating. A single car drifted forward. Uh, into the pack, windows like onyx bumper corroded, the sound changed timber, dropping suddenly to a sudden awful throb and tightened chests and shattered headlamps. Despite the harsh desert sun, frost was forming on windshields. Beverly was a stupid story sold to church to scare children. She wasn't real. So this is the car from Christine. <laughs> it's basically, it's a ghost car, <laughs> which I think is great. Um, uh, graveyard shift at the start of the game. After deployment, all vehicles in this team except one must gain the Ghost Rider special skill. Uh, Ghost Rider, this vehicle ignores and is ignored by other vehicles at all times. This vehicle cannot be involved in collisions. This vehicle may not make shooting attacks or be attacked with shooting weapons. This vehicle can never count towards the victory conditions of a scenario. So, like, you basically get one car. Any other cars you have become ghosts and they just kind of move around. Uh, Soul Anchor, if all in play vehicles from this team have the Ghost Rider special rule, immediately remove all vehicles from this team from play. At the crossroads, this team may choose to pay only one audience vote to respawn a vehicle. If they do so, the respawn vehicle must gain the Ghost Rider special rule. Inexorable, if a vehicle in this team is a wreck or to play, the vehicle may be respawned even if other rules would ordinarily prevent it. And Soul Harvest, uh, if this vehicle's movement to uh, template comes into contact with an enemy vehicle, the vehicle gains a soul token. Even if the enemy uh, vehicle is being ignored, if the vehicle's movement template comes into contact with friendly vehicles, Without the Ghost Rider rule that it did not start in contact with, gain an audience vote for each soul token or repair two hull points in the vehicle. So you're basically Ghost Rider or, or the car from Christine or 
I, like a million different awesome car movies where there's like a possessed car basically. Rusty's bootleggers, man, there's so many, so many now. And then uh, perks, all your perks. So your perks are basically just like skill classes. You can buy them and in campaigns you can also learn them. So aggression, badass, built, daring, horror, military, precision, pursuit, reckless speed, technology and tuning. Uh, and then these are all um, the original ones plus the new ones from Time Extended. The War Rig. So all the special rules for War Rigs. It has articulated movement. It's a different kind of car, so it gets its own like special ways. And then ways to play. So all your scenarios, team games, the death race, televised events, and then where is it? Campaigns. <laughs> Truckosaurus. There's a Simpsons reference. And then campaigns. So escalating seasons. We've actually started. Um, we started, but then like got sidetracked doing a campaign for Gaslands. I'll probably do one out of this now because I knew the rules were coming into a new form in here. Um, and uh, yeah, you get televised seasons, playing through different missions, winning scenarios, and hiring teams. Uh, you get all your campaign points for being a champion, and you spend dents just like in the. If you've seen the time, the stuff we did from Time Extended, this is pretty much the same. Spend them to gain uh, car injuries, basically, as opposed to car perks, and things like it can be held together by rust. Your car gets weaker because, like, the more shot up your car is, basically, the number of times you fix it and bring it back, it can be it can be beat up, basically. Uh, and then you can scrap vehicles and spend spoils. You earn cans from running championship races to buy new cars and stuff too. And finally, there's a narrative campaign called Savage Highways, where you have a war rig fighting against a bunch of gangers, and the gangers are trying to, trying to catch it. You get 120 cans in total. So you get different scenarios, escape the city, lots of great art for this too, an ambush, the long road home, and it's a branching campaign, so depending upon where you get to um, in each game, you'll play through different missions. And then notes and thoughts, and that's it. Quick reference, all the cards I showed you before, and we're done. So there it is, Gaslands Refueled. Um, so if you have a copy of the Blue Book uh, War Games edition um, of this game, this is still a great value because this is going to compile all the stuff you don't have right now uh, from the free online content. Is it necessary to play the game? Nope, not at all. Your current copy of the rules is totally fine um, and will uh, get you playing Gaslands just as easily as this will. But if you were looking to get your friends into Gaslands, I highly recommend this book because just from a formatting point of view, it's more digestible. Um, it has the rules um, in a, a succinct format, basically, for the core rules. And then the situation rules are removed to one side. So when you need them, you have them, but they don't muck up trying to learn the order of operations of things, which is really important in Gaslands. Uh, it uses all the same components, all the same templates, all the same gates. Anything you've currently got for Gaslands, 100% compatible with this book. So don't worry about your dashboards, your stats, any of that stuff. This this isn't a new edition. This is a succinct, pretty up, perfect compilation of everything Mike's done so far um, for this game, and it will be available soon from Osprey. So, hope you enjoyed this GMG review. Uh, we'll see you for another week's, uh, I guess, tomorrow. Yeah, at least tomorrow. Uh, until then, I'm Ash. Happy gaming. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathrite Designs, um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible, uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else, and most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.